How you doing, Isaiah, man? Doing good. Good, good. So, um, <laughs> I, I had to crack up. Uh, you know, going through your uh, the, the bio on Facebook, I get to talk to the man with the fucked up mind and the sexy way with words. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> The the one thing I definitely noticed too, like as I was going through stuff, um, you seem to be like uh, the voice of the band when it comes to the interviews and stuff. Totally, totally. That's always kind of kind of been my thing. You, you figure your brother uh, D, who's the front man, you figured he would be like more the outspoken one. He seems pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. We all have our like little roles or whatever, so it's kind of like. Luckily for them, I'm really annoying and talk all the time, so I can <laughs> take care of all the all that that whole level of you know business. That's awesome. Now, like, I mean, this whole thing is uh, is really a cool uh, story, uh, you know, being the fact that you guys are three brothers. Um, like, how did this whole thing start? Like, and I also saw that you guys were homeschooled, so I mean, it seems like you guys really spent all the time together, I guess. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, D, uh, we were always into music, and Dad, um, at some point, he brought that movie School of Rock home, and that really, like, <clears throat> got us really into, like, a lot of the bands into in that uh, movie, like Ramones and Led Zeppelin and stuff like that. So <clears throat> he had all that stuff, and we, we all liked it, but D really did the most... <clears throat> stuff and uh yeah at some point Saul and I started but we started when the band started so probably like seven or eight years ago this is about how long we've been playing but yeah like we just kind of got bored and wanted to do something like other than just hanging out all the time right <laughs> now now like um did you guys go to like a school of rock to learn or <clears throat> no actually uh, we probably would have loved it, but we didn't ever end up doing it. Now, how about, like, how did you guys, like, did you guys, like, actually sit and have a discussion, like, who's going to play what? <clears throat> well, D had already been playing guitar, so that was pretty much sorted. And I was going to definitely play bass, so it was already kind of set, because I had had a bass, and I just never practiced it. So, and then Saul was pretty much obviously going to be the drums, and it all worked out, yeah, like, everyone kind of already had their role, kind of. <clears throat> it's, and I guess he kind of didn't have a choice in the matter, like, yeah, he was designated as the drummer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> now, was the plan always to be, like, a three-piece? Like, did you guys ever think, like, early on of adding outside members, or... <clears throat> Pretty much three piece. We would have, we would like to have another member, but we, we it's just the dynamic of just the three of us works out. So it's kind of like, you know, um, it'd be weird having another person if it wasn't like related to us. Yeah. And your your father's also the manager, right? Yes. So this, I mean, this is just a total <clears throat> Radke family. Uh, it's a, it's basically a family business as well. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, just all of us doing it together. It's pretty much the dream. <clears throat> like you know, we all get along and get to do all this together. Keep the hang going. That's awesome. Now, did your father have um, any, like a musical background at all, or <clears throat> no? But there's some music in the family, <clears throat> but um, generally, it was. He was just a fan of music. Nice. Now, are, like, your parents on the road with you guys, too, or? I'm so dad. <clears throat> you know, dad comes along pretty much every tour. Nice. Now, like, how's that? Like, uh, you know, are you guys out trying to do, like, the whole rock and roll thing and then kind of feel awkward with <laughs> your dad's around? <laughs> no, actually, like, we, we all get along, really. We all kind of, like, nothing really bad because all we really do is smoke a lot of weed, and that's not a problem, so, and, and sleep so we can play good shows. We don't really party too much. Anything we do is just really relaxing. It's kind of funny. 
one one thing I saw that you guys do and you're all big into is uh, video games. Yeah, yeah. See, the, you can't get in any trouble when when you're into what we're into. <laughs> all we do is play video games, man. Like read comic books. <clears throat> yeah, video games are incredibly huge. I am losing a lot to how many games are coming out this month. It's driving me crazy. Uh, that's well, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> my daughter was. Uh, both my daughters are both uh, big gamers, and my daughter was saying the other day, she's like, you know, um, uh, I have that pre-order on Spyro coming out in a couple weeks. We got to go get it came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. I remember that game, man. Reason back. <laughs> Oh man, that freaks um, me out a little bit, actually. <laughs> that's too funny. So now, like, how long were you guys actually together as a band before you did your first show? Because I saw like <laughs> you guys did your first show. It was in 2011, but you guys opened for Fishbone. Like, that's mm-hmm. a pretty big step to do for your first show. Yeah, I mean, we we weren't a bit, we were band for a couple months before then. Like we were just kind of like jamming out, writing whatever songs, and all of a sudden it's just like, hey, there's a gig opportunity, and it's like, oh my god, no way, because we've talked about it, but obviously, but we never knew like a show was gonna like happen. Like wow, so like right. then it's like with a notable band, so we're like, oh man, that's crazy. So that was that was pretty nuts. At that point, too, like, if you do that first show, is that kind of like, uh, you know, cement the deal? Like, you just look at each other and like, this is this is it. Like, this is what we want to do. Absolutely. We're really lucky to have that show because we got the taste of what a really awesome rock show is for our first show ever. And that was like, right. man, you can never give up now because, like, you felt it. You know, you got to get it back. <clears throat> and, you know, every other show from then on was pretty... Pretty pretty weak because obviously no one knew who we were. But man, that first one really drove the band because it's like, whoa, we know what we can do to an audience. You know, we know that they dig it, so we can just get in front of some. We know we can have some kind of career. That's awesome. No, and the pretty wild thing is too. I mean, like two years later, you're over in Europe playing the Download Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was crazy. We played South by, and they played a show to like four people or something, and then a couple of them just happened to be with a label in England, and they spread the word, and we we kind of become more became more of a band over there in Europe before we really did anything over here. <clears throat> so we went over there all the time and played a bunch of shows, and yeah, we were kind of like one of those rock bands that's always in Europe for a while. Did that kind of like freak you out? I mean, being, I mean, you, here you guys are from like uh, the Midwest, and all of a sudden, like you're over in Europe, and and, <laughs> and you're getting this reaction. Over yeah, here. Be... it's it's really wild because you know, being homeschooled, we were just like some. We'd only ever been as far as like Omaha or something. So like we we were is nuts. Like to be able to, to for one go on a tour, but then like to go to a different country. It's like just another one of those things that you never pictured ever getting to do. Like, you know, St. Joe, a lot of people from there, including us, like we, you don't even really think about like, you know, Oh, I'm going to Europe someday. You know, it's not really something that's thought about, you know, so it's really amazing for that to happen and for the music to be what did it. It's like, man, we get to see the world just just because of kind of what we do. It's been super honor because I don't think it would have happened otherwise. Right, right. That's wild. Now, how about um? Yeah, I think I would still like San Joe. <laughs> no, are you guys like uh, in San Joe, like little hometown heroes? I guess. Um, I wish they St. Joe's kind of negative, man. They don't really look at us as heroes, but or even really? like Eminem, who's from there, yeah, like it's weird. It's kind of a negative city. Well, we get taken in more from Kansas City and uh, Lawrence, Kansas, than we do in St. Joe. Like we can. It took all of this time to be able to kind of pack, like to pack, but not sell out a small bar. It's like, wow, dude, what do you have to do to sell out a club in St. Joseph? Apparently, you have to be the biggest thing in the world. It's so weird. (laughs) That's wild. It's weird, man. It's weird. Like, St. Joe's weird. But, okay, so, so, like, but how was it, like, 
as you guys tour across the states compared to Europe? I, I mean, do you see it easier in <clears throat> Europe to to pack places than the states? Well, yeah, because it, it was so – it's just not as massive, you know. And then also you're from another country playing some rock music, so then there's a decent amount of interest there right off the bat versus like, oh, just some guy from Missouri, some dudes coming to rock, like, no thanks, or maybe, you know. You know, so it's, it's a little different over there. And then they just really love the whole live music thing and you can feel it. it's like it's way more of a thing over there that they love and respect and treat bands really nice whereas here it's a little more like hey, if you want to do it then deal with the crap you have to deal with because you're lucky to even be here whereas in europe it's like oh we're so thankful to have you fucking here's all the stuff you need have fun you know not just get a good luck lucky you, ha- right, lucky right. you got this <laughs> <laughs> No, also too, like uh, I think I, I think it was last year you guys played. Didn't you guys play Rock Allegiance over in uh, Jersey last yeah, year? Yeah, totally, totally. That and, was crazy. And and then you guys, I mean, you guys played like Louder Than Life, Carolina Revival, like all the big festivals, which are more uh, metal, you know, geared towards metal and the metal crowd. Totally. Like, uh, do they accept you guys being more, you're more punk? <clears throat> that was what was cool because like. Everyone loved it because we were like a change of pace. We were like one of the only bands doing something kind of catchy. So it's like everyone's kind of like, you know, I'll I'll listen to some cheap trick ass shit for a set. Like, let me get down to that set, you know, because it's going to be the one set that's doing a little something different. Because like all these, yeah. that's something that looks cool about this uh, label is like they were like, let's fuck, let's bring Radke to like the rock world. And they all took it and loved it, which is awesome. Cause we're like huge rock fans. Like that's what we've always been. So to be able to be in that scene was a super honor. Cause that's like, for when I was like eight is like, man, can I be one of those awesome dudes? Like, <clears throat> so yeah, I was surprised about our music too. Cause we're not the heaviest band, but we do do the solos and stuff. So like they were into it, which was cool. That's awesome. Now, how about like uh, like recording wise? Like, I, I know uh, you guys did a couple EPs, and you took time before you actually put out like a full length. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were just being the the classic kind of music fans, we wanted to wait to put out an album just because like we knew we weren't good enough yet. Like, we didn't want to just put out an album. We wanted like, like for instance, Delicious Rock Noise. That's like everything that we were and all of our skills, every single thing put in to that and that was like that's when we were ready for like an album because it meant a lot to us like we didn't want to just put out an album <clears throat> so it's kind of the same with this one you know throw singles out there to you know keep like not be annoying and have no songs out and then keep playing shows but like even though albums aren't as important these days like it's still like you still want to get you still want to have that really solid album with no filler on it right and did you guys actually release something on tape cassette? Yeah, we did. We did a we did a set at um, the what was it the 100 Club in London, and we recorded it all and put it on cassette, which was fun. Like people, that was back in the day when people were giving me a bunch of shit for putting out cassettes. But it's like, man, let me put out my cassette. It's fun. Let us have fun. Don't drink my soul and have it all. Let's just have a little bit of fun. Come on. Uh, it's funny because, I, you know, I, I think, like, especially with the, you know, the younger generation, like, I, I know, like, my daughters, I mean, they're teens, and I'm, I don't even think they realize what tape cassettes are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like, let us, let us have this last little bit of cassette action before it's just completely forgotten. Like, who even right. knew we would have this chance? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's awesome. Were, were people kind of like, uh, like, what is this? <laughs> How do I play this? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's like, oh, why? I, le- I want to hear this, but I- I'll buy it, but I'm going to have to find a way to listen to it. <laughs> like that whole thing was like, ah, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Got to get uh, that awesome. dust off that cassette player. That is awesome. So now, now you guys are getting ready to go out on a, on tour with uh, – the legendary band, The Damned. Yes. Yes, very excited. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys we're are actually rolling in here to, You guys are rolling in here to Philly uh, October 21st. 
Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That was the last time where there was Kung Fu Necktie. There last week, as a matter of fact. That's funny. That place is cool. I really like it there. Yeah. But, you know, I went there and saw a comedy show, which was weird. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was. It actually cool. was the dude from um, from the the TV show Chicago PD. I don't know if you watch that, but um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the guy that plays Kevin Atwater, he was doing stand up there, and I was like, all right, I, I gotta go. But it was like we were <laughs> going to a comedy show and and not having seats. You like you had to stand. It was just yeah. Weird... <laughs> yeah, that's trippy. But it was yeah, cool. I think David Cross does that where everyone stands. That's it's weird. And it sometimes even had a band opening, which is also weird. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's cool. an interesting show. Yeah, it's a cool club, though. I like that place. Nice. So, now, and how about um, being that I'm from Philly? I don't know if you know this or even heard of them, but the first black punk band came from Philly, Pure Hell. Did you ever hear of them guys? Interesting. No, I think I've heard the name, though. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they came out in the seventies, back of like, you know, Ramones, Sex Pistols, cool. days, and yeah, they, they it's were called uh, Pure Hell. Pure Hell, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, check them out. Like you, you'll see, like their history and all. And they like uh, they were tight with Sid Vicious and stuff, and whole mm. real. Yeah, yeah, and actually, like my old band, um, they did like a reunion show ten years ago, and we played with them, which was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. So, all right, so what, uh, so you got the tour. What else is you guys got coming up after that? Anything? Any plans for us of the year after that? Or, um, pretty much just playing a bunch of shows and also we're <clears throat> putting out new songs and stuff. So, I know we're going to be putting out a new song, um, like, uh, it was like next month or something like that. Or, but kind of just keeping the new songs rolling, keeping writing, keeping in the studio. Like, it's just cool. Like, it's cool that, to have the opportunity to just keep going as the band, just keep the songs going and keep having fun. Sure. That's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to more music. I'm going to try to make it down there to the show, check you guys out. Cool. Yeah, you know what? There was one thing too. Like, um, I saw some video. I think it was on your it was on your on your Facebook page from uh, I guess the other night or something you guys were playing and you guys had a girl on stage with a trumpet or something and girls with lights and all yeah. that like an, uh, all the time or no that was uh, some we were doing this uh, festival in KC and they asked us a couple months ago like hey you want to do like a set where maybe Radke plays and then there's like dancers and uh, horn and I was like we were just like yes <laughs> so then we uh <laughs> It, it finally got that we never practiced or anything, but we got down to the night and it was just like last five songs were a crazy event and that was really, really fun and weird. Like never did anything like that. So that was kinda like a get to play like a local show but also get to do some weird, fun stuff, make it like really special. That's awesome. Yeah, it looked pretty wild. I I, I was hoping it was an every show thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, oh, was, that was something. <laughs> Cool. Well, Isaiah, man, it was great talking to you. Congrats with everything. Yeah, looking man. forward to hearing more music. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the 21st. Yes, yes, totally. Thanks, man. Take care and good luck again. You too.